Hi, my name is Lee Nash, pastor at Sparks United Methodist Church. Welcome to worship. And uh, I'll bet I know where you are not right now. Of all the places you could be, and maybe you're uh, still in bed participating in this worship service, you might be in your easy chair in the living room or family room. Maybe you're making breakfast, lunch, or dinner in the kitchen, but I know where you are not. You are not sitting in a pew. And for those of us who grew up at some point sitting in pews, we know that you're supposed to be still when you sit in the pew. Many of us have a hard time sitting still. I have always had a hard time sitting still in a pew. Maybe that's why one of the reasons I became a pastor because I didn't have to pew sit. But here is a message that's coming your way from a good friend of mine, Blake Busick. He is the uh, district superintendent of the Great Northern District of the California Nevada Annual Conference. He's going to share a message with you that will redeem your sense of having to move. That's right, far from being necessary to sit in a pew, he's going to tell you that in order to join God's mission in the world, it's important for your body to be in motion as well. So for those of you who want to move about while you're listening and watching this message, you go right ahead because that's what this message is about, moving towards God. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. Our scriptures today come from both the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and then also Philippians, chapter 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in Him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory as of a Father's only Son, 
full of grace and truth. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the, the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Greetings. I'm grateful to Pastor Lee for providing me this opportunity to share a message with you today. I'd like you to imagine yourselves being perfectly still, as still as you could possibly get your body. Once you imagine that, I want to give you three numbers, okay? Three, a thousand, and 1.3 million. Even if you were to actually accomplish the feat of stilling your body perfectly, your blood would still be flowing through your body at three miles per hour. Not to mention the speed of the neural signals and the lymph fluid and the air and the food and the cells all in motion in, within you. You would still be rotating on the earth, rotating with the earth around its axis at a thousand miles per hour. And you'd be on a planet that is traveling about 1.3 million miles per hour, rocketing through space. This includes the speed of the of the earth around the sun, the sun around the galaxy, the galaxy itself <laughs> moving in the universe. All this is happening even if you remain perfectly still. To be alive is to be in constant motion. Life is about motion and movement from the quantum level to the largest galaxies in space. We are a people, we are a creation on the move. We are bodies in motion even if we are sitting perfectly still. When God said, let there be light, God set the universe and everything into motion. Right? This is a physical, material reality, but I think it's also a spiritual reality as well. Yet often we think of our spiritual lives differently as being kind of grounded or immovable or unchangeable. And I think this is misguided. You see, life is about movement and motion, and if spiritually you're not feeling fully alive, it may be because you have tied your spiritual life, your Christian life, to an immovable set of beliefs that must be defended and guarded. Again, I think this is understandable, but it's a mistake. It's a problem. It's easy to fall into the trap that spirituality and Christian life is all about beliefs. You know, you learn a set of beliefs, and then you cling to them and put your trust in them. Many think that this is what Christianity is all about. You learn a set of beliefs, and then you decide whether you accept them or not. If you do, you are a Christian. If you don't, you are not. If you accept them, then you become part of the church and help to enforce adherence to those beliefs. If you accept them, you become a part of a body that, that resists change to those belief. In essence, spiritually speaking, your life is cemented to those beliefs. Now, if life is about motion and movement, this is a problem. Because even if those beliefs are true, if their effect is to cement your spirit to a fixed location, then it sucks the life out of you. Christianity, human life, is not a set of static beliefs to cling to. Rather, it is a relationship to a person we can trust. You say that again, it's not a set of static beliefs to cling to. It is a relationship to a person, God and Jesus Christ, that we can trust. We are all tempted from one time to another to substitute beliefs for the person. And that is a mistake. 
It takes all the movement out of life, all the relationship out of life, all the joy and power out of life. Christianity and human life itself is about a relationship of love. Now, there are beliefs, yes. But you see, the beliefs function differently. The beliefs really are knowledge. The beliefs are experience of the beloved that we know and, and understand and share. The beliefs are not what we cling to. We cling to the beloved. Our faith, our life is nothing apart from this relationship. And this relationship we come to know and describe. And yeah, that's a set of beliefs, but it's very different whether or not the beliefs point us to lead us to a closer relationship with the beloved or whether they are what we're clinging and, and connected to. It's the relationship that's the thing. There's no substitute. And relationships are dynamic and moving and growing because that is the nature of love. The apostles knew this. When they encountered the resurrected Jesus, they were, they were made whole and filled with his love and grace, and he sent them to be his witnesses. And they embodied that love, and it moved them out, and they transformed the world with their witness. The early church knew this. They became a movement of the love and grace of God. They even changed some of their beliefs. You know, at first, these early Jewish Christians to, did not think that the Gentiles were to be included in the same ways as others were. It took a great movement of the Spirit and a leading of the Spirit and a, and a council in Acts 15 before they could understand that, that this, this church, this movement, this love was intended for all. Wesley and the early Methodists knew this as they spread uh, the, the, the love of God like wildfire across this nation, as they sent circuit riders out and they formed uh, Christian communities and faith communities and gathered together in societies and, and class meetings and to, and to share in this relationship. The apostles knew it, the early church knew it, Wesley and the early Methodists knew it. We know it. It's in our DNA as Christians, as Methodists. It's in our DNA to be people like the apostles who were sent out to be people on the move, spreading the love and joy of the Lord in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. In other words, at home, in the neighborhood, in the region, to the ends of the earth. The problem is that this apostolic part of our DNA has been dormant. I want you to hear me clearly now. You, you too are an apostle. It is in your DNA because you're part of the body of Christ. This capacity is already in you. This capacity to take the love of God to new people and new places. A central mark of the church is that it is apostolic, meaning that like the apostles, we are sent out to be people on the move, bringing God's light and love to all. It is who we are. It is in our DNA as Christians, as Methodists. We just need to activate what's already within us. It's already there, ready to bring life to us as we pass life on to others. Let's unpack this a little more, if we can. All that I am talking about has its origin in the nature of God. We see that God's nature is love, and as such, God's nature is to move outwardly. We see this in the, in the reading from John's Gospel, that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, the Word that was preexistent, the Word that was with God, the Word that was God. In the what we call the incarnation, there's this outward movement of God to be one of us. In the Philippians reading, though he was in the form of God, he did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself. We talk about this using a word, kenosis. He emptied himself, taking the form of a slave and being born in human likeness. God's self-emptying love creates the outward movement. Love creates the movement. Think about all the people you love. When you express it, there is a movement toward them in your mind, in your spirit, in proximity. All we are trying to describe, describe here is just simply how love moves, because love is the essence of this created universe that God has made. This is the way we are meant to be. 
This is the mission of the church. God's self-giving, self-sacrificing love being proclaimed and expressed to the body of Christ, the church. But this movement of love begins to become dormant when either we replace it with beliefs or it becomes too institutionalized, where love is no longer the driver, the institution is, the institution's expectations and demands. So clinging to beliefs is one problem that displaces us from our true apostolic DNA. Institutionalization is the other. If the institution of the church is not constantly changing, constantly evolving, constantly reforming, constantly renewing, then the institution becomes the end in itself. Then we are motivated to make sure the institution survives. We act to preserve or grow the institution rather than to act, rather than act to express the love of God moving through us on its way to others. Now, it's natural and good that institutions form. It's inevitable. They are meant to support relationships. They are meant to, to support mission and movement. And in any kind of human relationship, there is an institution that surrounds it. It's true in the family. We talk about the institution of marriage, the institution of the family, the institution of the church. There are ways in which we agree to live together, be together. There's behaviors we expect. There's some rules sometimes we follow. That's all necessary in any kind of a relationship. And the more people involved in that relationship or that movement, the more institute, the more structures, the more organization that's needed. That's all to be expected. But when we become institutionalized, we are more concerned that the church survives than people survive, that the church grows rather than people grow. So let's awaken our apostolic DNA, shall we? Let's awaken our Methodist, our Christian DNA. This is just five ways. First, remember who you are. You are a disciple of Christ, loved by God. You are a descendant of the apostles and the early Christian witnesses. You are inheritors of the Wesleyan movement that spread the love of God like wildfire across this nation. It's already in your DNA. Remember who you are. Secondly, form Christian community. It's really important to have locations for community to gather. It's important to have a Pyramid Way location. It's important to have a Spanish Springs location. It's important to have an online location to gather in large or small configurations, right? It is because it is in community that, that this apostolic DNA is activated because that apostolic DNA is simply the outreaching love of God flowing in us and through us. So form Christian community. Number three, stay centered on Jesus. It is his DNA in us that we are actually talking about as disciples of Jesus, as the body of Christ. An obvious point, but one that needs to be stated. Stay centered on Jesus. Four, be empowered by the Holy Spirit. God's presence and power are actively flowing through you. You have not been given an assignment that you now must go do on your own. You've been given the living God. You've been given a moment-by-moment -moment relationship with the Almighty. And all you need to do, all I need to do, is follow the Spirit's lead. And the Spirit will always lead us to do the most loving thing in every circumstance. The Spirit will always lead us to see others as loved by God. And in that, we find our motivation to be on the move, to be apostles, to be apostolic. So be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Number five, see yourself as a location. You're calling as Sparks Church to begin a second location in Spanish Springs is also an opportunity for each of you to think of yourselves as a location. In other words, you are also a place for others to experience the love and grace of God wherever you go. You are like those early Methodist circuit riders who went into new territory to begin new communities of faith, new expressions of God's love and care for the world. Ultimately, the church isn't simply on Pyramid Way or eventually in Spanish Springs or in this online space. 
It's wherever you are, wherever you are incarnating God's love, wherever you are being an apostle of God's grace, wherever, like Jesus, you are emptying yourself, making transparent the very spirit of God among us. So remember who you are. Form Christian community. Stay centered on Jesus. Be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And see yourself as a location. You carry the whole DNA of the church within you. And wherever you go is a place for those others to encounter the very love of God for their life as well. You and I don't need to create the movement. It's already within us. The movement begins within you. Everything else is just an outward expression of an inward compassion and love of Christ that dwells within you. You don't need to say we're going to create a movement. You and I need to say we are going to love as God has loved, has first loved us. We are going to do that together and create structures of support to sustain our expressions. We, the California Nevada Annual Conference, the Great Northern District, and you, we continue to be partners in this endeavor. And it will weave and change as we have already seen today in these announcements. But it is God's love, our apostolic DNA, that is pressing us forward. Not simply our plans and designs. Those will change. Three miles per hour. A thousand miles per hour. 1.3 million miles per hour. To be alive is to be in constant motion. A central mark of the church is that it is apostolic. Is always moving outward, bringing God's light and love to all. It's who we are. It's our DNA as Christians, as Methodists. We just need to activate what is already within us. I'm ready. Are you? If you hear from the psalmist, be still and know that I am God. And so during the next few moments, I invite you to be still as you reconnect with God. But during the prayer, I'm going to suggest that you do not remain still following the prayer. Let's pray. Gracious God, give us those moments of stillness when our souls can be calmed when our anxiety can be leashed and put away, when our fears can be allayed, when our hearts can be warmed 
with the presence of your spirit. Give us those moments of stillness to connect and to reconnect with you. Give us those moments frequently and often. But may your spirit guide us from those moments to be part of your active creation. May we join you on the journey where Jesus beckons us to go. May we seize the opportunity for the adventure that only each of us can fulfill because of the unique graces and gifts that you have given us. Oh God, hear our prayer for those moments of stillness, but also for those steps leading to faithful action to be your word made flesh for this will, world. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us to say when we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Recently, my wife and I took a few days to visit Disneyland, one of our favorite places. And uh, one of the places we enjoy visiting is California Adventure. There's a section of California Adventure that used to be named Paradise Pier. Well, over the last several years, they've converted it so that it is now Pixar Pier, featuring many of the full-length motion pictures that ca came from Pixar Studios. Now, I was interested in moving into that part of the park because there's a huge sign that you have to walk under that says Pixar on it. And so that lets you know that this is Pixar Pier. But when you leave, on the back of that sign, there's a very interesting message. That message is, the adventure is out there. I think that that's what we've learned. The adventure is out there. Jesus is out there. God is on the move. We are invited to be on the move, to be part of God's great adventure in following Jesus. I invite you to be on the move and to join that great adventure. Thanks for joining us here at Sparks UMC. You can connect and join the conversation on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. If you'd like to receive the weekly emails that share what's happening in the Sparks UMC community, scan the Connect QR code on the screen, or let us know by filling out the Connect card on the website. If you would like prayer, you can scan the code or email us at sparksumcprayers at gmail.com. We'll see you next time.